What's up, Rockstars? Welcome to another news video for some board game news, some Kickstarter news. Let's talk about a whole bunch of stuff coming up. There are some big names, some big reveals of some dates, even some names of some games that we haven't known what to call yet, all in today's video. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate all the videos I do every single week for you guys and you can give even a dollar a month, there is a link down in the description below to give and I do greatly appreciate it. That money goes directly to helping support and fund this channel. You guys know how expensive these Kickstarter games are. It's expensive to do something at this scale and so I do greatly appreciate your help with that. Thank you so much. Now let's just go in and dive right in, straight in. We're going to start with the Lobotomy 2. By the way, there's not a whole lot running right now. There is a bonus game I'm going to show for the first time on this channel at the very end of the video that you probably wouldn't expect me to cover, but I'm going to anyway. I'll tell you exactly why at the end. But uh, this is mostly just like the next few weeks are going to be a whole lot. And then some bigger items coming up later uh, also have um, uh, some dates and stuff like that I'll share. So Lobotomy 2 Manhunt, I've shared this a few times. It's got the sexy Gandalf. Everybody appreciates the sexy Gandalf. Um, this looks like just such a fun setting for a game. It's silly and it's wacky and I lowered my pledge on it. <laughs> um, Kingdoms for Warren is over by the way. They made like over 1.1 million euros and so they're like super happy with that and that's cool and they're, they're teasing a whole nother kingdom and uh, the next few years they'll be showing that off and so there's definitely more to come in that IP. They're definitely, um, uh, invested in it. So that's kind of cool, but it's over now. It's done. They charged my card. Now here I am with Lobotomy 2. Um, I am still getting this, by the way. Uh, it, it's a nice price. I like it. And then I'm just adding uh, a one add-on to it, which is pretty easy. So this is about 86 bucks here for me there with the admission pledge. And then I'm adding um, this one right here, the DC villain, uh, themed award. It has the penguin, the Joker and Harley Quinn in there. So I get a kick out of that. It's like 17 bucks. It's for three minis plus their characters and stuff. Like I, it's not exactly the best priced thing ever. Um, that being said, a lot of companies would charge 20 bucks for a character expansion or something silly. So, uh, I'm, I'm fine doing that. It's, uh, it helps support them anyway. So either way, very cool. Uh, excited for that. And this, by the way, has like uh, seven days left, so it's like a whole week, so you're good on that. Next up, we have Fantasy Commander. This has been on for a while, too. They are at 36,000. That's about where they were last I showed this, and they still have nine days to go. So we'll see what the uptick has on those last 48 hours. So probably by next news video, we'll have a, a clearer picture of maybe where it's about to end. I guess so. It'll, it might be two videos later. It depends on how much news comes out. All right, next up, we have Malia or Malia. Lands of Legends, it's right there. I've already did an unboxing. You can see that link down below. I will be having a review here soon too. That's March 15th. So very, very soon we're going to have this. Um, it reminds me, at least the storybook reminds me a lot of Arena. The contest looks like they have kind of riddles and mazes and, you know, more RPG, like a tabletop RPG kind of feel to that, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. It's not just story. The Bad Karmas, the Curse of the Zodiac, plus the Tebru system. I'm not going to scroll down on this preview page. I don't know how open this one is, but this is also March 15th, so I'll have a review for that as well. Right now, I'm working with the company to try and get some more gameplay in with another boss uh, because I really want to do my due diligence when it comes to reviewing this because it's kind of a big deal, and I want to make sure I give you the ins and outs on it. This is going to be a weird review, by the way. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out per se, there's the game, but then there's also the the actual hardware. And coming as a software developer, I, I I have ideas and insights into that too, right? And so you might hear mention of like Wi-Fi chips and stuff like that in this review for a board game. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild. So uh, be on the lookout for that. That's coming here very soon. I'll get it in time for you guys as as 
best I can. So we'll see. All right. Then we also have a Tamashi Chronicles of Ascend. Uh, this, this used to be under a different name, but now it is Tamashi, which I think is just like, um, outsider or something like, like, I don't know. I, I forget exactly what it relates to whatever. And the Chronicles of Ascend, Ascend is like the AI in there. Um, so this is interesting because I, I feel like Awakened Realms Light is becoming less and less light. Um, but either way, there's a ton more info on this now. So as you can see, they have added a lot of information. The core box, 75 bucks. I mean, l lobotomy here was <laughs> what 85 ish or whatever. So, so the, the, the light is, is such an odd term now, but whatever. Um, so 75 bucks for the core. And in that you get these different, they call them mines, but there's, these are the different like, um, like bodies, starting bodies you can be into and stuff. Uh, and then you, uh, so that's kind of your, your characters, right? You get your 11 cards, some tokens for you, and then your board that you interact with, right? And then you have all these other things that you can get assassins and defenders and engineers and chemists and knights and soldiers and whatnot. There's uh, the 24 map tiles that are kind of randomly generated. Tense Nero cards, which uh, kind of get interchanged and stuff like that. 110 event cards, 70 AI cards, 44 exploration cards. Again, this is not a small game. 32 faction cards, two special AI sheets, and then a whole bunch of other stuff uh, included as well. 40 different markers. I mean, this, again, I don't know where light, what light means to Awakened Realms anymore, but <laughs> this is... This is pretty hefty. There's a lot there. And then you can upgrade all of your standees to miniatures for 40 bucks. Now at the start, that's not that great of a deal. It's a little over $2 a mini. You're getting 18 standees turned into 18 minis for $40. For crowdfunding prices, that's not a whole lot, especially when it's not new gameplay or anything like that. It's just the mini. So it's just the sculpt plus the, the mold cost or whatever. So, and it's just an all or nothing thing. So they, they could have priced this lower. However, the reason they're not is because it'll come with all stretch goals too. So it'll get its value, I'm sure, by the end of things. It does not have it up front. You're paying quite a bit for those molds, considering this is going to be a high traction, uh, uh, uh add on, I, I, I suspect. So, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're going to make bank on that, uh, probably either way, but, uh, hopefully the stretch goals add quite a bit to that. So just be on the lookout for that and know going in again, you're paying for those stretch goals, right? Especially the, the minis here. That $40 is definitely for that. Uh, but, but either way, I mean, the entry price of what was it? 75, 75? Uh, there's a lot of game there. It is kind of interesting. They're, they talk about this, you know, Tamashi adventure system. It sounds like a fairly normal adventure system. It's a little roguelike, especially with the different scenarios and modes and, you know, getting bad luck or good luck on which body you get and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of like a roguelike narrative game that you get to replay over and over and over again, essentially. So, um, it, and she loves her pizza box. I think it's a laptop, but it looks like a pizza box. So anyway, uh, yeah, that is coming out in like six days. So again, like real soon here, guys. Next up, we have Age of Rome. This comes out on the 29th. I will have an unboxing for this. Now, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. However, um, the reason I'm going to start doing more of those is because they're easy for me to do. If you get some benefit and some insight into it, and when you're interested, then that is a great thing. It looks like a very pretty game, so I think it'll fit well. Anyway, I do like some high quality um, games and prototypes and uh, stuff. At the end of the day, I'm buying a physical product and I'm spending hundreds of dollars to do it. I want it to be a nice physical product. So that's, that's where that kind of comes in. Next up, we have Batman Gotham City Chronicles Season 3. This is with the RPG and the uh, solo co-op plus a new expansion. Uh, I think it's the Gotham on Under Fire or something like that. That'll be March 23rd. If, and, and in case you didn't catch that, in case you didn't know, in case you've been under a rock, that makes the entirety of Season 1 and Season 2 content solo co-op. They'll have an AI system there that you can actually use. So um, you can play through the whole thing as a team. So if, if you felt balance was wrong or something like that, uh, I think a strong player in the villain side can normally win in the, uh, in the, the game as it's currently balanced. Uh, at least in my experience there, it's a lot more um, uh, on, uh, there's a lot more effort the heroes need to do to, to do well, but I, they normally can, but either way that this, blows it wide open. So a ton of content here, March 23rd, except for that. They've talked about storage systems for all those season two things. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be big. All right. Next up, we have sleeping gods distance guys. You, you guys have talked about sleeping gods, like none other, like you guys know what's up. So in 40 days, you're going to be able to get more. What's nice about it though, is if you've been missing out, if you've been hearing all the talk or whatever, they are going to have 
all of the other old stuff here. So you'll be able to get the sleeping gods, the metal coins, the, the nice lore journal, even the painted ship, all that junk. If you want to pay for it, it's yours. And then of course you get more here as well. So very cool. And I'm sure a lot of people will be very happy about that. Now, no word yet on price. There's no prices here yet, but um, one of the nice things about preview pages is they can keep adding to them and eventually we'll see it. So that's exciting. Next up, Speaking of Batman, Night Games, they are finally coming out with their Escape from Arkham Asylum game on October 26th. October That's quite the delay. I never did hear back uh, on what the health issue was. I hope everybody turned out okay, though. I'm assuming that's what this means, and I'm excited for it. Uh, this is the best picture we've seen of the game itself, so I want to talk about this a little bit. If you didn't know, since you played as the bad guys trying to escape Arkham Asylum, so you get to fight Batman, and they're going to have a ton of minis. Looking at what's here, I am seeing repeats, right? There's three here, three here, three here, two here, right? And then you see some more over here. Um, so it, it, I mean, there's, there's all these different, like these guys are these. So that's three, six of them here. And these three and these three are the same. So there's those there. There's two more there. So that's six, seven, eight of those guys right there. So the, the lackeys are going to have a ton of repeated sculpts, at least at the beginning. Looking at the actual map, it looks like it's a very much a hallway room, hallway room style map. Um, and it is kind of um, uniquely shaped here, right? It's not perfectly even. So uh, if you notice, there's no connecting piece here like there is here on the other end. And I don't know if you set up set up differently, if it's always set up that way or not. Um, either way, it's not too many rooms, but it's a fair amount considering you can obviously stop in the hallways as well. It kind of reminds me of Nemesis a little bit there ton of different tokens like a ridiculous amount of tokens so you're gonna it, it's gonna be a lot there's all these different decks you have your different player boards here so yeah looks interesting it looks like the uh enemies are in purple uh, but then there, there's these three repeated here so i don't know exactly what's there and i'm assuming the heroes are in blue would be my guess my assumption there but I guess we'll see because I see Harley Quinn there and I see Batman there, blue, purple. So there's the Riddler there, right? Scarecrow. So anyway, should be pretty interesting. I'm excited to uh, to see more about it for sure. All right, next up we have Zervia. Zervia can never pronounce that name well, and I apologize. I'm probably saying and one of the ways I say it. I've said it like eight different ways. It's probably right, but I don't know which one. Um, I want to be able to unbox this for you guys, and I'm so excited because it looks like such a beautiful product. If you guys didn't see how this product ended out, it looked really, really nice. They are going to be having a, a reprint, a, a, another campaign. So you'll be able to get on it. I think that's a great idea. Anytime you deliver something and it's a good product and you get it in people's hands, you're bound to make you know more money the next time as the word gets out about how great of a product it is. So excited to show that off. I don't know when it's going to arrive, but when it does, I'll be sure to unbox it for you. I'll let you guys know exactly what I think. I love the theme, the art, the style of it. So I'm all about that. I'm, I'm excited for it, really. And Andromeda's Edge is by Cardboard uh, Alchemy, and that is coming up soon as well. You get a little kind of blurb for it. Uh, really, it's a it's a, a Euro kind of game where you have your science, your industry, your commerce and that, but they have like a smattering of, let's see, it says into a uh, player powers, worker placement, area control, da tableau engine building, hand management, and dice battles. In other words, they're like, okay, we have all this like meaty mechanics that are mathematically sound, but we also want you to have fun. So here's some dice, you get to roll them. We'll see how that works. A lot of times it's just a skill test kind of thing, uh, or, or where you just have a target number, you're rolling one die, and then it's that. Or it's something very basic like swords versus shields kind of thing, where it's like you roll and whoever got more wins kind of, you know, so it, it, it's, it's kind of like rolling a die and be like, I got a six. You got a four eye ah, win kind of so we'll, you know we'll, we'll see how it is I'll, I'll take a look at it but anything that can give me the the the, the meat of a, a, a highly thematic mechanically driven game i actually enjoy that a lot but then i want to have some fun i want to have some excitement and so hopefully it can give both if it can I'm looking out for it. In case you guys didn't know, even every, way before ISIS Vanguard even, I've been wanting some Mass Effect sci-fi themed game. I don't have anything on that, 
like that on my shelves and I want that. Uh, they, they keep coming out with like these space 4x games and these euros and they're not quite the the, the thing I, I, I'm looking for to fit on there. So we'll see. Will Andromeda's Edge be it? I don't know, but I'll take a look. I'm sure a lot of you guys will too. Battle Systems, they have their core space, which is their sci-fi game. Some of my patrons go crazy over this. They're super excited about it. It has some beautiful terrain. I'm going to show you some of it here in a, in a moment. That's what Battle Systems is known for, was actually making like uh, neoprene mats and terrain and stuff like that, uh, the cardboard terrain specifically. And then they made a board game on it. Core Space did so well. Now they're doing a fantasy version, i.e. it'll fund more because that's how things work. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. And this is on forum.crowd.com. I come or kowowd.com or whatever. I come here every now and then. I can't read a, a lick of it typically, but they have really good info, really good pictures that uh, it, it's hard to, to gather anywhere else. So I've been on here quite a bit. You can see the terrain. This is how the game looks. I know. I know. I get it. Look at the It's got the torch sticking out and everything. Crazy. So there's people showing sketches and different models. There's a typical map. You want to play the game? There you go. They are insane with the terrain. If you want to be have to move around the table as you play because it's so thematically like terrained up where you can't see past walls and crap, this is it. Uh, this will jump you into it. My only kind of complaint for their their style is it tends to be fairly muted in colors and a fairly monotone. Where there's a it's pretty much just browns. Core space was like that. It looks like this is like that as well. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get any green forests and bright colors or anything like that. They tend to go tan brown, and those are kind of the color pods you get. Either way, it's called Maladum Dungeons of Enveron, or is what it's going to be called. There's kind of a mock-up that they're kind of putting up there. It's 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 going to be big for sure uh, because again, it's got the fantasy. It's got a solid game mechanics that people love, and uh, um, and, and it looks pretty. It's got the table presence, right? I know very a lot of my patrons. I know you guys on the Discord love that terrain. I do too. So yeah, this is this is going to be big for sure. Next up, we have Faralis Obscure Land. This is a card game that it, it's kind of like. Magic the Gathering Hearthstone style, but it has some twist to it that I think are kind of interesting. So um, here you can kind of see some of the um, some of the cards. So it has kind of this like incubation process where you place the card down and then it takes a while to come up. And so you kind of have to like program ahead of time and assume a certain board state ahead of time. There's some strategy around that. Also, a lot of the cards are double sided. They have two different sides, a, a regular side where it just goes back to the incubation if it dies. And then the, the stronger side, which is great and it's strong, but then it goes into essentially your graveyard if it dies. So you kind of have to kind of decide how to play it and do stuff like that. It looks pretty interesting. So uh, I, I really like taking an established format and then Put the twists on it. What is your twist to that? What is your difference? What is your change to that? Uh, I really like the idea of having to plan ahead. I was just playing Magic with my son the other day because he made a new Swamp deck and wanted to play. And um, I, I was playing just this kind of like red deck where it was the theme on that one is I have a whole bunch of weak units that build up and get stronger over time. Like every time they do damage, they get a plus one, plus one or something like that. Or, or and then, and then of course they can, you know, pay a tap and just do damage to that and then get it that way. So they don't even have to like get defended or attack or something like that. There's a whole lot of shenanigans in that red deck for a red deck. Um, but either way, like we were playing that and I, there was a point where he like, had the game or whatever right and i was and i literally thought about how because then it swapped and i just i was not able to anticipate the game state a few turns back like if you would have told me this is where the game would be at like three turns from then i would have been like i i mean i guess anything's possible it's magic but you know you never know and so having to kind of guess that and like plant the seeds of your guys coming in i really like that twist so i'll be looking at this and the theme looks cool too of course the art looks neat um but yeah really interested in in that uh, i i kind of like that a little bit of programmabil pro programmability programmability a little bit of programming in there, perhaps. Okay, next up we have Thorgal, the board game. This is based off some kind of graphic novel comic book, uh, which it looks pretty. I love the style. Um, it sounds interesting, for sure. There's character morality. It's a whole bunch of, like, uh, scenarios, but then you're making decisions through that scenario, but they're all one-off scenarios that you can play over and over again. There's no legacy stuff there or anything like that. You get to keep playing 10 standalone scenarios, is what they're calling it. Each one taking roughly 90 to 120 minutes to play. So a lot of, I mean, that that's some decent content right there and but it's not a huge amount to where i just won't ever finish it like 
I like that. I really do. One to four players. So it supports one players up. It says it's age 14 plus. I don't know if they're saying that. Like a lot of times they'll say that just because of small parts and regulations when it comes to shipping products aimed at children. Or if they're actually mean like, hey, this is 14 plus. There are some kind of um, teens and up moments there. I don't know what, what that entails. So uh, a lot of times they put that on the box, but normally they don't advertise it that way. So it'd be kind of interesting how they're advertising it. Um, anyway, so that's very cool. Uh, Porno McKenneval's character development the abilities are upgraded during gameplay and negatively affects by wounds suffered in fighting. Characters gather resources and craft objects to help them. So uh, again, I love crafting. So there's a lot here that I'm kind of looking at that sound interesting. So uh, definitely has my eye between the art, between the practicality of playing all of it and getting all that content and uh you know being able to even play solo uh it's kind of interesting so we'll see kind of how this plays out uh but definitely definitely uh at perked my interest at least all right next up we have uh cyanide and happiness are coming to game found with their next campaign but we don't know what it is ideally this one doesn't involve encouraging people to support pedophiles going towards children but who knows? Who knows? I think Clay Cyanide can be uh, very, very funny and not go to that level. There is a difference when it becomes a game and you're making the choices. So it's kind of like the, you can have Hitler in your game, but if, if part of the objective is saying Hitler should live because he's great, maybe that's a choice you don't necessarily want. But either way, they do have this um, if, if, if you follow now, by the way, and all the links are down below, of course, all the links are, you get uh, one free blind box figurine, which is the tenuous value. I can't stand these blind boxes, but people love them. And I get why. Same reason I like booster, you know, card decks and stuff like that and opening up and seeing what I got. Um, but uh, the, the, the blind box stuff, then uh, I'd rather just buy the collection as opposed to that. And 10 bucks for that's expensive, but they look cool. So just having one and putting it like on a shelf or in your cube at work or something like that, that could be super fun. Um, just don't spend like $300 trying to get them all, please. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. All right, next up, this is an update. If you recall, I made a, uh, a video uh, titled This is Despicable or This Company is Despicable or whatever, where Phalanx Games uh, was using the like Russia-Ukraine thing to like sell games, right? So it was Europe, Europe Divided was the game they were trying to sell. They clarified and they posted this. Essentially, they posted it on Wednesday, the day before um, the Russia actually went into Ukraine, um, you know, the, the, the nation of Ukraine and actually started shooting missiles and all this other kind of stuff, right? So before the initial attack, once the attack happened, they took it down. How, which, which is important to note, and that's why I'm updating you. However, using the fact that 190,000 Russian soldiers were on the border and that you should be able to recreate why that happened or what, like that, that it, it's definitely poor form, right? Because you know where that's headed. I think everybody knew where that was headed. It was just a matter of when. So it's probably not the, and, in general, if you're using current events to sell your game, you want to be careful about what current events you're using. Whether it's, hey, people are massing an army to go shoot people or people have just shot people. Either way, I would I would suggest edging away from it. So hopefully they learn the lesson to not use current events like that. It's typically not a good idea. Just in general, avoid it. Uh, I, I mean, this is marketing after all. If, if it could possibly be construed as bad, you just shouldn't do it, I would think. Um, some of my marketing patrons can probably correct me on that or let me know if I'm wrong on that. But I believe it like um, when I worked at a, a big corporation, we had the headline policy. In other words, if your decision, whether good or bad, would be on a headline of a newspaper and people would read it, would it sound good? And if the answer was no, then don't do it, regardless of the benefit, regardless of how good it might actually be. If it could sound bad don't do it. It's not worth the negative publicity. So that's, that's what like these fortune 50 companies that I've worked at have told me. And I kind of believe it. And it makes sense to me. So in the future, probably don't use current events like that. Um, but it is important to clarify. They didn't like do it after they shot, right? It was, this was before. And then they took it down. Then I don't know if there were already complaints or not. They probably woke up to complaints. Just like we woke up to the reports, right? I mean, that just tends to be how it happens. So, cause it was in the middle of the night on that, on that, the early Thursday, I guess, really. So, Anyway, there's that. All right, moving on. We got Sword and Sorcery on the Teberu. This was announced. Uh, there is another game. I don't know if it's been announced yet or not, so I'm not going to mention it, but they have two that they actually have on board. This is Sword and Sorcery. The reason I wanted to show you this is, first of all, it's public, so I can talk about it. Second of all, I wanted to show you how it's a different game. 
One of my concerns when I was going into this, because each mini kind of needs to, well, okay, it doesn't need to. You don't necessarily need to uh, use every feature of the Tebaru, right? It, it just, it can track minis if you choose to. I mean, it needs to. But if it does, you do need a little a little kind of round chip thing, right, that that tells the Tebaru, this is this mini and it's here, right? Um, and, and so you can't, like... That's fine on a boss battle because you have the boss and then the hero. So there's not a whole lot of minis, right? But on something like Sword and Sorcery, you can have quite a few. There's quite a few here, right? Um, but they don't necessarily have, you know, like the boss ring there that, you know, bad karma stuff. So, and as you can see, the tiles are way different as well. So there's a lot of possibility there on how you play it. Um, so just wanted to point that out there. And actually, that looks like it's half a board too because the Tebaru actually folds out much longer than that. So... Uh, it is kind of interesting to see other people use the platform to make different kinds of games with it. Uh, it'll be kind of interesting to see how Sword and Sorcery benefits from the integrations. I'll be sure to track that. I'll be sure to mention the future possibilities in that Bad Karma's review for you guys. So hopefully we can kind of cover our bases and, and figure out what's going on. But I wanted you to see that so you could see that, especially going into my review. Like, it's not just boss battlers. You can do dungeon crawls and stuff like that in there too, I, I obviously. Okay, next up we have Ryozen. This is a pretty looking game let me show you um it, it is a worker placement game featuring a layered rotating board and multiple resources none of that is typically my jam okay so just but by golly it looks it looks freaking pretty and and you can get a miniature you don't need because i don't even see where you like what it just it's probably a first player marker or some junk like that but you can get the early bird you'll be able to get it day of you can um Make sure to get it by getting notified. Get that subscribe button um, it, because it is uh, coming out in a little while, uh, my understanding, but I don't, I don't have an exact date for it. But you can subscribe here, and it does show you how many subscribers are there, which is kind of nice. I tend not to do this. I prefer the remind me, right? And so you can, and you can do that. You can come here, I lost my mouse, and click the notify me on launch. You can always do that. There's 780 there, um, but you can get more information this way. It looks really pretty though. It doesn't look like there's a lot of reading upside down, hopefully. And it looks like you you place your cards with the text facing inward instead of outward, which does help as well. It means everybody here can kind of see that. It's it's only backwards to you. My my assumption on where you're placing those. Um, but which is still kind of a, a bummer to you, but I don't know. It depends on what it is. There is a contest here as well. So go ahead and do this contest. Um, if you want, they are giving away three Kickstarter edition copies of that. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it's very pretty. It is a very pretty game. There's a lot of different spaces too, right? There's these rounds here. There's these this inner ring and then this outer ring as well. And then uh, some stuff on the outside as well. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, these decks here and stuff. So, and of course the scoreboard wrapped around. So yeah, it looks pretty and you can, you can win it maybe. So good luck. Good luck. That's coming up. All right, next up. Parasol, this is interesting. So I've shared this once before, and in fact, I've shared this a couple times because way back when they had a Kickstarter, but I need to talk about, again, some marketing strategies here and have a quick conversation with you about how you're using your money. So Parasol or, or Paracol or whatever, Gathering Darkness, this is a app-driven tabletop RPG. So you can play the RPG portion of it, but then have the app be the GM. So it's a GM-less or a DM-less um, uh, tabletop RPG. And there's a lot of interesting possibilities there. I like how constricting that is. You can't just do everything off the wall because you are limited in your options you can do, which I actually prefer, but um, I, I know some people won't. So for me, that actually sounds more interesting. Um, and 3,340, like they have a lot of followers that it looks like it's cool art. It looks like there's a lot of promise there. This is a little weird though. So these are pictures from my patrons that were kind of do this, so I didn't have to sign up for it uh, to get these. But it says, hey, everyone, I know you've been counting down the days like the rest of us here, but just a quick reminder, Parasol Gathering Darkness is launching on Kickstarter March 9th. So like now, again, there's links down below um, and they're too excited to sleep, I'm sure. There is still time to sign up for the VIP status for only $5 to lock in your 42% discount. VIP status, huh? Click here to upgrade to VIP for only five bucks. In other words, they want you to put $5 down before you see the game at all, before you, the, the campaign's running, you are already $5 in, right? Now they have a refund based uh, based on a full refund before it goes into development. Now development is a weird word choice there because I'm sure it's already in development because 
they 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 have like the, the the demos there and stuff so like it's been partially developed so i don't know if that's a catch all to not do it or if that's a super poor wording ideally if you're doing a terms and conditions or refund policy or something like that you have very careful wording so i would like to assume that they chose their words on purpose in which case the development probably means it's past time so i don't know they can clarify that if they want and i don't think they're trying to be sneaky by the way it's just a marketing tactic because you've already put money in so you're more likely to um, act on that money. It's the same reason why GameFound has the, hey, you know, put $5 in early or whatever, and then you get that. It's the exact same thing, right? It's, it's just, just doing that here. So worth, worth a chat with you guys. But the marketing kind of gets bad here. So then it says to receive this offer, simply place a $5 deposit and you'll be locked in for our exclusive discount. Putting $5 down now locks you in at a 42% discount, $71 off on your MSRP of $170. Now, MSRP, I already said in a previous video, you're paying too much for Kickstarters, means not a whole lot typically because there is no middleman, it's just you and them. The MSRP was for, would be for a retailer to get profits by buying it for far less than MSRP and then selling it. MSRPs are for retailers that buy at a discount. You're, you're, you're not a retailer, you're not buying at a discount. So a 42% discount is, is like not even quite a retail. They're normally half off or so. So like you're still paying up, up it, whatever, like that's... I had a, I have a whole video on that. Either way, that means you'll pay a grand total of $99 once our Kickstarter goal is met. Okay, well, that's nice. That's nice. Hey, Jeremy here. Really quick, in under 12 hours, we have already raised thousands for our early Parasol Gather, Gathering Darkness backers and our VIP offer ends at midnight to get your copy of Parasol Gathering Darkness for $81 off $170. That's over 40% off retail. Now, the issue here. First of all, this $81 off of the 170 and this is $71 off of 170 and this is $99 and then this is $81. Which is it, right? This this email should not have gone up. This was a, a, a marketing email they were going to do day one of Kickstarter. In other words, they were assuming they were going to launch Kickstarter, raise thousands of dollars, and then release this saying, hey, we've released thousands. Go see it now. Obviously, the, the campaign hasn't even launched yet. This was done on accident. They did apologize for this, but it goes to show the marketing right? The business tactics that are, are at play here. So I just want you guys to be on guard and just make sure you're doing um, your due diligence. Watching videos like this is obvious that whether it's my channel or somebody else's, you're, you guys are, are in the clear. So I'm kind of speaking to the choir here, but just letting you know, just be aware of what companies do and why they do that. Why do they want my email address off a of Kickstarter? Well, it's because if, if the Kickstarter follow remind me button or, or uh, notify me on launch is only for that game. If they have your email, now they have your email for any future game they ever make, they can email you with a marketing email, which is of course what they do. It's what you should do for people giving you their email, but that's why it's more beneficial to them because it's not just that game. It's that game and every other game they ever make for all of eternity until you click on subscribe, whereas the Kickstarter is only there, right? So that's, that's why, right? That that's, that's why they do that. Um, but you can actually see Parasol. So if you're interested in still saving a little bit of money, and by the way, it sounds like the 42% is just 2% more than the 40% off early bird backing. So it sounds like day one, you're going to be saving about that much. But either way, if you're interested in the VIP, there is an old campaign. It's hard to get to, but here it is. I'll link down to it below. You can kind of see their original take on it. Now, obviously, I'm hoping they've learned a lot from this failed one and they'll come back stronger and better than ever. Of course, that's the whole idea, but you can get kind of a sense. And here, by the way, the core game was $95 base, not $170. There's no MSRP talk here. Again, that's all marketing, right? They didn't say it here because they were and And it's not bad to market things and say, hey, this would be $170, but they're not. They're saying this is $95. This is what you get, right? right? Now they're saying this is $99. You're getting this huge discount. It's normally 170, right? And then they have this advanced at 150. So it never did reach 170. There's some, odd, anyway, you, you can figure out how you feel about their numbers and, and, and what they're doing there. But, um, I, and I don't want to end on this. So I do have a surprise for you at the very end. Well, not really a surprise, but anyway, you can kind of look at that. And by the way, there is, here's Jeremy right here. And he's talking about how like, Hey, we, we're just, trying to market our game. Like we're not trying to be shady or anything like that. And honestly, I believe them. I don't think, I don't think they're trying to be shady though. I think some people view any kind of marketing as shady. I, my apologies to some of my patrons, but uh, that just tends to be the case, right? It feels kind of slimy and, and you know, cause you're, you're trying to 
paint something in a better light than it is and, you know, make it seem that and swindle people into this and make them feel compelled to do that by because they've already, uh, that sucking cost fallacy, they've already put the five bucks in. So they will lose that five bucks if they don't back it. So they're going to back it anyway because then they haven't lost that five bucks and now they're spending 90 bucks. And like, I, I, I get it. I get it. It just, ugh. anyway. Hamlet. Let's talk about Hamlet. This is actually on Kickstarter right now. 94000 almost towards that $100,000, 20 days to go. Why on earth am I covering this? Because it looks really <laughs> kind of a, a, okay, so it looks fun. I have a thing for like Civ games, like video games, right? So I play these solo, but like I played a game called Banished on Steam. If you guys know what Banished is, that suck the soul out of me. That I spent so many hours building up my little towns just so people could die to a blizzard or a tornado. Or I would, I would, uh, and I, I know you guys are going to laugh, but in this video game, I'm selling sheep and I'm raising cows and I'm building churches and I'm giving everybody a better education so they're better workers and I'm making sure the herbalist has plenty of nature you know reserved for her so we're not cutting down the trees while she gathers stuff there and I I love that stuff as a single player video game style thing right I do so fundamentally I actually really dig the like town management aspect all the way back from like Sim City and Roller Coaster Tycoon and all that other kind of stuff right like I was always a fan of that stuff so like th when I see stuff like this I'm like oh okay so you you know you, you get your resources and you go to gather them and then you're building buildings and you know building up the town and 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 the, the, you're actually building the buildings so like the things come up and stuff like that i think that's super cool the shapes of things by the way are like really weird like there's all these gaps and stuff it, it, it it's, it's an odd thing for sure um and you got to build that the uh, church in the middle is how you win now there is like it, it's co-op so it'd be more than one person so it's not the solo um though there is a solo mode um but it's not the solo mode I would think of in like the video game thing. And it's like, but then like only one person's going to win because only one person gets the highest score. So I don't know. I, 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 I'm not so much sold on the co-op thing, but I, I do like these kind of games as a single player video game. So I'm a little interested. I know, I know it's got meeple donkeys even, ugh, ugh. but it actually looks pretty neat. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, and I thought you'd get a kick out of my, my hidden love for, for sheep and chicken trading, um, by the river to, uh, feed my and warm my, my villagers over the winter <laughs> weather, I guess. Anyway, guys, that's all I had for you today. There's a ton there. There's, there's a lot coming up, obviously, like a lot. So, um, yeah, Batman's coming, right? Then Batman's coming again. We're going to get two Batmans this year. Uh, the, it's, it's going to be big. This month is it's huge. Kingdoms for Lauren just ended and there's already a whole slew of other games coming. So if there's anything you would like to share with the community that I can add to the list, go ahead and link it down or, you know, link it to me, you know, tell me about it down below. I'll add it to the description I'll, so that everybody else can see it. And, uh, maybe you'll turn me on to something I missed. I would love to hear from you guys. With that out of the way, have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys again really soon. Bye guys.